Uh, hey, Big Deb. How's it going? <clears throat> so, today is the day that we do the... Oh, man, I didn't talk about that book in my what I'm reading. So, this is my wrap-up. Um, I didn't get a lot read, but I did get a bit read. So, here it goes. Um, Dune, Frank Herbert. I tried reading that a while ago. Wasn't interested in it. Uh, I thought it was taking too long to get going. Whatever. Listened to it again um, just a little while ago. Loved it. I absolutely loved, loved, loved it. And it might be because I'm out in the desert and I'm like kind of like immersed in sort of the feel now. It's like sand dunes and I'm constantly thinking... Um, worms are going to jump up out of the ground and eat me and everything like that. Um, but it, there was something so different about reading it this time. Um, I think the characters were all great. Um, there was... I was a little worried about... Because when the, when the book was written, it was written in a serialized form in like basically three different parts and the third part happens later in time than the, the first two parts obviously but like the first part and the second part happen pretty much right after one another and then the third part is a bit later so i was like uh, um because i always i don't know i get like kind of weirded out when there's a big time hole in something but it completely exceeded all expectations. So if you haven't read Dune, give it a go. It is definitely worth it. But, um, and Steve, if you watch this, let me know down below if I need my brain examined or whatever. But I've been reading Dune Messiah. And I really don't like it. Um, this takes place way later than Dune ends off, but it's the next book in the series. It's very short compared to all the other Dune books, I think. Um, it feels shorter. But it's like everything's terrible. <clears throat> everything's awful. But they have everything they wanted. But everything's terrible. And yes, there were visions and foreshadowing in the first book that this was going to happen. But when <clears throat> um, Paul Moadib starts comparing himself to Hitler and how many more billions of people he's killed than Hitler it really makes you not want to root for him. And I know that this whole Dune saga thing takes place over years and years and years and years and probably hundreds of years, okay? But Paul is supposed to be our hero, okay? And I know the book's called Dune Messiah. I get it. But, um... I'm like probably 85, 86% of the way through the book and it's just looking bad and Paul's looking like a dick and like no one's likable anymore and I'm just like and I get this is probably what can happen when you go, I, I, I want to say it's like 15 years in the future. I could be wrong, but I want to say it's like 15 years. Um, might be five. I can't remember. Um, but it's just like, I would have liked to have more triumphant Paul. Since he was triumphant in Dune. Spoiler alert. Okay? But it's like, everything's awful and if i'm missing something and if i just need to like just go through it i don't even know if i want to finish it that's how like 
just upsetting it is to me. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth thinking of what it came from. Like, the first Dune book was so good, and this one is so not. So if I'm missing something, or if I'm off point here, please, someone let me know down below and kind of take me by the hand. Guide me, people. Guide me. Um, but since we're on YouTube, <clears throat> I thought I would tell you a little bit about um, John Plant's Primitive Technology, um, a survivalist guide to building tools, shelter, and more in the wild from the successfully popular YouTube channel, Primitive Technology. Now, this book is beautiful. It's a beautiful naked hardback, tons of great pictures that are from the YouTube videos, your contents, the whole thing. Now, when you are reading this book, how to make a hammer stone. It's a rock. That's it. And there's all sorts of stuff. And when I was reading this, I was like, stone blades. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, if this whole book's like this, a hand axe. It's a sharper rock. Like, I started really freaking out. going. I was looking forward to this so much. Please don't be crap. Um, <clears throat> and honestly, once you get past... Um, like the beginning stuff that you need, like how to make a stick and things like that. This gets really good. And some of the things that it does that's awesome is that it obviously is going to go into more detail than the videos did, so I thought, which we'll get into in a second. And if you haven't subscribed to Primitive Technology, it is like one of the most like relaxing and amazing channels to watch. It's really good. Um, I'm trying to find something to, to explain why. Oh, here here's a good example. The loom. The, the loom he made in the video. Um, this goes into a lot more detail. And something that is this kind of tricky, I think is good to go into the detail that it goes into compared to the video. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm trying to find, there's another one, there's what in the houses, that's actually probably the most interesting bit that I kept going back to, um, and the shelters, the shelter bit of the book. Um, where is it, where is it, an ondol. Um, 160. Now, this thing is cool, and I remember when I saw the video of him making this, I was like, oh, dude, that's awesome. I need to do that. And it's basically um, this, like, hut you make that you can... I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to find it. The page numbers are really tiny, and my old man eyes can't see very well. So this is it. And, like, you make this, like, vent in the floor... Um, that goes all the way back to the chimney so it like heats the rocks right here so there's like a warm bit in here well I, th it doesn't say it in the video that I remember but it's like oh yeah um, a lot of people die from this from carbon monoxide poisoning so don't do it or be like super uber careful that and I'm like oh my god that's good to know because if I didn't know that I'd be screwed and then when we go into, like, things like this, reusable charcoal mound, like, um, the pure clay goes on top because if you didn't, it would crack. And that's something I didn't catch from the video. So there's a lot of stuff in here that is actually quite helpful. It's just, like, farther on into the book. Um, uh, so it... it when I first started reading it, I got scared that this was like some like first grade stuff. And, but what I will say, I went back and started watching some of the videos to make sure I wasn't crazy and that, um, he didn't say, Oh yeah, you're going to die. If you do this, if you put the captions on, it tells you everything that's going on in the video. So that book is awesome. But if you watch the videos, 
a lot of the information that's in that is not only right there in the captions as it's happening, um, but, like, obviously his blog has a lot of stuff on it, um, but even the comment section um, under his videos, like, he'll go into talking about the science of something, and, like, chemists will come in and go, oh, yeah, the science is right here um, for this, whatever, and then they start using words that I don't know, because I'm not that smart, and I don't have a degree. So, but that's okay. But, bottom line, it's a good book. Pick it up. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, like, and any of this is interesting to you at all, like, I don't even know, like, why are you watching this video? Stop watching this video. Type in the search primitive technology and subscribe to the channel. It's like my favorite channel on YouTube. So, with that said, um, check that out. And, oh, Sailor Steve Costigan. I might have said this in the last video, but in case I didn't, um, I have the Pulp Lit audiobook from last month's credit. It was so good. Super class. Like, it's just about this sailor who's the boxing champion on um, the Sea Girl, the boat he's on. And it's just like a bunch of short stories of him going from port to port, getting into adventures with him and his bulldog Mike, um, and him beating the crap out of people, and getting the wool pulled over his eyes by pretty ladies. It's like, uh, I mean, I know it's dated because it's like the 30, early 30s, so there, there might be some sensibilities that you might not like. But dude, if you like... Uh, I don't know how to say this without coming off as like a total dick, but like every time I would listen to that, all I wanted to do was get into a fight. I'm like, this is so much fun. Like not fighting, but like, oh, it just, it just makes you want to go out and get into a big old brawl and then hug the dude afterwards and buy him a beer and just hug all bloody. Talk about what badasses you both are. Zoe don't get it. It's a dude thing, apparently, huh, babe? Yeah. So anyway, Sailor Steve Costigan. Um, it's the complete um, Robert E. Howard, Sailor Steve Costigan stories. Um, it's written, like, the, the intro, I guess, is written by Finn J.D. John, who did... The awesome HP Lovecraft omnibuses for Pulplet and the awesome Conan um, Pulplet book. I I can't speak highly enough about him or his skill. The um, narrator for this book I can't remember his name. It's like Diamond something. Um, I feel bad for not remembering it, but he's amazing. Everyone on this project was amazing. So. Um, if you like reading about people drinking too much, beating the crap out of each other, and having a dog, like, oh, you can't go wrong. Sailor Steve Costigan, are you joking? So anyway, go pick that up, and um, let me know down below if I'm totally off point on any of this. Um, let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know what you thought about any of these. And I will talk to you later. Goodbye.